try to make the most of things that are in your control. And by that, I mean reading, researching, start a blog. If you think you've got something to say, say it. My name's Shauna. Um, I work at a company called Bulb, um, a green energy supplier in the UK. Um, And my my job title is Renewable Energy Manager, though I'm not sure if it's the most helpful job title to explain what it is I do. Um, I essentially look after sustainability at Bulb, and I work across four different areas. Um, So from energy research, policy, marketing and comms, and looking after our internal sustainability as well. So things I'm working on um, at the moment include leading and delivering our net zero targets, looking after our B Corp certification, and also advocacy and and comms around green issues, um, but also on the product side, I look after buying the renewable gas for bulb and managing our, our carbon offsetting portfolio as well. I wanted to dig deeper into the technical details of how to solve the climate crisis. So I went and did a master's at Imperial College in sustainable energy engineering and policy. And after that, I moved to Amsterdam to work at a startup um, where I was doing operations and business development, how to lower carbon emissions using something called demand side response, which is quite technical and don't worry if you don't know what that means. And I really enjoyed it there, but the company wasn't really getting off the ground and I couldn't afford to live in Amsterdam anymore. So I moved back to London and that's when I ended up at Bulb about three and a half years ago. And I joined as an energy specialist, one of the very early ones. And I um, moved to become a, um, a manager into a manager role after three months. Um, and I was on the side of that manager role. I was buying the renewable gas and looking after our community of renewable generators alongside the manager role um, and eventually I decided that that was the bit I was mostly most interested in and I wrote a job description and I pitched it to the co-founders and eventually I, I moved into the role that I'm that I'm doing today about two years ago and, and it's developed uh, since there. I always knew I wanted to work in um, the environmental space. I mean, I can remember from as young as 10 years old, reading a book about climate change really early and thinking, this isn't okay, I want to be a part of that. And that was when it was called global warming. We didn't have the phrase climate change and obviously it's all changed since then. So I knew I wanted to to work in that space, but I didn't really know in what guise. And when I was younger, particularly, when I was at school, I remember being obsessed with the idea that we only seem to have two types of people in, in the world, certainly in, from a career perspective. We've got scientists and we have artists. And I really didn't understand why there was such a distinct line between those two types of people, because it felt so obvious to me that not only do we need people that can do both, but those people do exist. And so I just did everything. Um, I couldn't, I wasn't one of those people that could agree on three A levels um, that were sort of all similar to each other. So I did five across science, art, languages, uh, possibly the weirdest combination of A levels um, ever. (laughs) But I felt absolutely certain that we needed to have more people in the world who could marry science and art to solve the world's environmental problems. And so I was just determined to find a career that let me do that, though I didn't know exactly what it was going to look like until, well, a couple of years ago, really. A real feeling I remember having was was just being feeling incredibly overwhelmed about what on earth it was I was going to do. Um, this was still back in the day where and, and it probably still is like this, I don't know, but you you know, the, you sort of think there's this traditional route of go to school, get a degree, go into a grad scheme, and then you'll launch your career from there. And I was I was really confused that that felt like the only option 
and yet no one was getting onto grad schemes because the market was just flooded. And then I it came became apparent that you know a bachelor's degree wasn't enough. I think there are two types of people when it comes to their career. I think there are people who are subject matter experts um, or sort of role experts. So by that I mean um, if you're a role expert with a particular skill, maybe you're a graphic designer, you're a data scientist. Um, you're a software engineer and you can take that skill to any type of company and any type of industry. Um, or you're like me and you're a subject matter expert, which is that you, you really have a passion for a certain topic. So for me, sustainability, and you get the full spectrum and deep understanding across lots of ranges of skills. I knew I was a subject matter person early doors, but I thought there was no place in the world career-wise for people like that. I thought I had to shoehorn myself into one of those roles. Uh, I had to choose policy or um, science research, and I thought that that was the only route. But what I've realised since then is there's totally room for subject matter people with a broad range of skills in the working world and not to be put off by that. And if you find something that you love, you're going to be better at it. Try to make the most of things that are in your control. And by that, I mean reading, researching, start a blog. If you think you've got something to say, say it. And it doesn't matter if no one's listening to you. There are things you can do that showcase skills and entrepreneurial behavior and initiative that you can do without needing anybody else and right now it's obviously tricky to be relying on other people whether that be corporates or placements or or, or whatever it might be there are loads of things that that i'm sure you can be doing that that you can do without the help of other people so i don't know if you think you've got a particularly keen uh, point of view on something you could start a twitter page just for that and start getting a conversation going start exposing yourself to other views out there if you're I don't know yeah, if you've got a particular view on something or you think you're interested in something but you're not sure if you are see if there are some free online courses I mean a lot of what people have got now is is time and probably not a lot of money <laughs> so if you can be finding ways to fill your time in an interesting way that's going to increase your knowledge or your expertise or, or your passion about something for free. There are plenty of things out there that are online that, that don't cost money to further and broaden your, your knowledge. And I think one thing that I always find helpful is it's just as helpful to know what you don't want to do as it is to know what you do want to do. And the only way you're going to find that out is by a bit of trial and error. So make the most of this time we've all got on our hands if we're if we're indoors or you know not going out as much and um, to broaden your horizons and find out niche niche areas you're you're interested in. Mm -hmm.